Hello, and welcome to a new Let's Play of mine. Let's play Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclock. This, of course, is a sub-series game in Shin Megami Tensei, and it's one of my personal favorites. This is a game that was released early in the life cycle of the Nintendo 3DS. I believe it was released in 2011, and it was one of the first 3DS games that I owned, so a very nostalgic one for me, something that I have a lot of s to say about, and I've done plenty of playthroughs of this game, even have 100%ed uh, it on my personal copy of the game. Now, when we start up a new game here, we have two options, normal and easy. I actually don't know what easy really affects. I've read that it increases the EXP and money payouts you get from enemies, which definitely would make it a little bit easier, but of course we're going to be playing on normal. Note that there is no hard mode in this game, which is probably why the sequel to this game renamed the difficulties uh, Apocalypse and Blessing. Other things to note is that, of course, we'll be playing a fresh new game, but I already have a New Game Plus file made to show off all the additional content that this game has, so we'll be going over most everything there is to see. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's actually start the game and see the opening cutscene. One born of human flesh. Man is now a race of some power. You... Son of man. Must face the power you hold. And you must face your destiny as well. Hello? Hey Yuzu. I just got an email from Naoya. He wants to know if we can hang out tomorrow. Naoya? Isn't that his cousin? I should be free tomorrow. Though your days be peaceful, the fated time draws near. I am your judgment. I sundered the tongue of your fathers and shattered their arrogant power. I can't do this. What was I thinking when she gave me this song? Just take your time. The language of song is boundless. Do what your heart tells you. So long as the Lord does not live in you, all living beings hold darkness in their hearts. The summoning vessel is complete. Will you continue to lend us your strength? I've done nothing. The primal common tongue summoned them. Besides, I follow no god. If you truly wish to be yourself, then rise and fight the darkness within, the demon inside. If you have the will to challenge your destiny of battle, son of man, state your name.
And with that, we are given the option to enter our name. Naturally, we can enter our first and last name, but also much like uh, Nocturne, you also have the option to put in a nickname. So I will just adapt my name into the 3DS entry. Do not get uh, too much, too many characters to put here, uh, just six a piece. So yeah, not exactly. If you have a longer name than that, which, uh, you know, if you have a name that's uh, written in English, probably you have a name that has more characters than that. But, uh, you know, it's what we gotta deal with sometimes. They don't always feel like uh, doing that. Once you have that entered, just press start to finish, and then you can enter your nickname. I'm feeling a little nostalgic, so I'm going to enter a nickname that was uh, given to me at the suggestion of some friends that uh, were in a call with me when I first started playing this game. We'll be going with... Taiki, and uh, this was uh, this just came about because they happened to be watching Digimon Savers at the time. Perhaps in a moment of serendipity, the lead artist for this game also went on to be uh, the character designer for the Digimon Cyber Sleuth game, so kind of funny how things work out like that, isn't it? Anyways, with that said, we've got our name entered, let's start the game proper. As he proclaimed, this world, created in the seven days, shall be destroyed by the sounding of seven trumpets. You who have a will, fear the numbers your eyes shall see. Fear the time left. And the day before, an end to the ordinary begins. Now the bulk of this game takes place on the bottom screen, so I've aligned my recording setup to have that take up the bulk of the screen. Occasionally there will be some dual screen shots, and if I can remember to switch to a separate scene that I've set up for those, I'll be sure to do so, but most of the game, uh, except for the opening video, weirdly enough, is situated on the bottom screen, with the top screen uh, just showing supplemental information, which is why I've set up the recording like this. Mid-August. The summer of your second year of high, sc high school is almost over. Apologies there. People visiting Tokyo have begun traveling back home. It feels as if there are fewer people about in Shibuya. Your cousin Naoya, with whom you'd been living until a few years ago, suddenly called for you to meet him outside 901. Now do note that uh, this game is actually fully voice acted. Naturally we have a mute character and most of the dialogue that is uh, in regards to him right now is just narration. But every story cutscene in this game is fully voiced, which is a... Uh, it ends up being a uh, pretty impressive amount of dialogue. I believe it's uh, 20,000 lines of dialogue, over 20,000, were voiced all together for this. Which is pretty impressive for a game that I managed to get an English dub. And I'm not even sure if uh, the later releases of the Persona series managed to top this though five royal probably does anyway let's continue the scene hey over here a boy carrying a laptop computer runs up to you yo how's it going oh, real nice of now you to make us meet him outside on a hot day like this isn't it so how's your summer been we usually meet at school so it feels like it's been forever is everything good Oh, uh, absolutely. This is our friend Atsuro, certified cool dude. I like Atsuro, and he's a he's as he will prove throughout the course of this game, he's a real bro. Anyways, let's uh let's uh enter the scene with some good amount of positivity. Yeah, everything is great, my friend. Ah, that's the dude I know. Young guys like us need to be full of energy. Still, I couldn't think of anything to do, so I spent all day on my laptop. <laughs> I can relate to that. Oh, this is great timing though, man. I just ran into this problem with my coding. Oh, it has me completely stumped. So I was about to go ask Naoya if he could help. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you guys. Hey, here comes Yuhu. Don't call me Yuhu. My name is Yuzu. Ugh, will you stop calling me that stupid nickname? Even boys at school call me Yuhu, and it's your fault. Ha, <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? It's a friendly nickname. And it's not just our class. Some of the teachers actually think your name is Yuhu. That's because people like you keep calling me that. Ha! Ah, it's working. All right, all right. Let's not be aggressive. But this is Yuzu, the girl next door of this game. And uh, she's a bit fiery. But uh, we, we're here for business. We're looking for Naoya. Huh? Oh, that's right. 
I ran into Naoya a moment ago, and he asked me to give these to Atsuro and you. He said that something's come up and he won't be able to make it. Oh, what's up with that? Now you stood us up. Wait, what did he want you to give us? Here, take them. They were a pain to carry around in my bag, too. Yuzu opens her bag. Hmm. Those look uh, suspiciously like 3DSs. Now, Devil Survivor Overclocked is an upgraded re-release of a game, of course, just called Devil Survivor, released in, I want to say 2009, but uh, I'll, I'll have to double-check that later. But, uh, of course, that system was naturally for the D... or that game was naturally for the DS system. Uh, you get it? Devil Survivor DS. So in that game, the, the graphic here was slightly different, and they looked like... Uh, I believe it was the original Fat Model DS. In this game, on the other hand, of course, they have been updated to look like 3DSs. Anyways, they're game systems. Aren't these those communication player things? I've seen commercials for them before. They're like, play with people around the world. Oh, you know about them, Yuhu? That's exactly what these are. The name communication player is a real mouthful, so people just call them comps. Well, they have email and a web browser, so they're more like cell phones than game systems. Ah. Uh, huh. Is that so? Now you said you'll all need these. Don't let go of them. Huh? You'll all need? Well, there are three of them. Still, why would we need these? I mean, I've got a comp back at my own... Huh? What the... I've never seen this menu. Did he homebrew this? What? Do you mean he made this himself? Is that even possible? Huh? Don't you know you who? Now he is famous among us programmers. He's a genius. Something like this would be no problem for him. Huh. I had no idea. Is he really that good? Hmm. I can't open this folder. Looks like it's protected. Protected? You mean it's set so other people can't mess with it? We can't look inside, then. Hmm. Well, I mean, Atsuro, if he knows quite a bit about programming, and, you know, he has said he's been messing around with coding, maybe he can hack it open. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Good thing I brought my laptop along. Atsuro connects the comp to his laptop and begins typing furiously. Huh? H hey, Atsuro, what are you doing? <laughs> what does it look like? I'm gonna hack this folder wide open. You're hacking it? Hey, now he's gonna be angry if you do that. Oh, chill, chill. I have a feeling this is this is a test. Come on, it's not a big deal. Huh? Are you sure about this? You don't get it, Yuhu. Now he's my teacher. If he took the time to call me up and give it to me, that means he wants me to break his protection scheme. It's like a friendly greeting. That doesn't make any sense. Why can't he say hello like a normal person? Let's take a look here. What's his encryption scheme this time? <laughs> Isn't this intense? No, only someone like you would find this exciting, Atsuro. Hmm. Ha! There we go. Now you can at least check your mail for now. Here, these are yours. Atsuro gave you a comp. All right, hey, uh, even though we haven't really set this up, uh, looks like we already got an email. Read through an email to mark it as read. You will need to reach the bottom of the email to close the email viewer. Now, periodically throughout the game, we will, of course, get emails, and you do need to read through these in order to actually advance the game. Uh, it will not let you uh, go until you've read all your email. Uh, you very rarely get uh, email over the course of uh, actually playing a day, though. You usually get it at set points throughout, and you have to check it immediately. Good morning. Here is today's news. At around 1600, a man will be killed in a, a Shibuyaku Aoyama apartment. The wounds on the corpse are consistent with an attack by a large carnivorous beast. The heck is this? Two, a large explosion will occur in Minatoku Aoyama in 1900. The cause is unknown. At 2100 hours, a blackout will affect the entire Tokyo metropolitan area. Have a nice day. Strange. It says it's the news, but it's writing about things that have yet to happen. The Laplace Mail, eh? At around 1600 in Shibuyaku Aoyama, a man will be killed? He'll be attacked by some carnivorous beast. Uh, 
What kind of news is this? That's so creepy. There's a lot of reactions you could have to this, but, uh, yeah. I, I don't, this would make us seem kind of dumb if we said that. Let, let's just say, uh, yeah, that is kind of creepy. I know, right? The way it's written so offhandedly just makes it even creepier. It also said there'll be a blackout in Tokyo today. What is this? It says it's today's news, but none of this has happened today. Why would now you put a lock on this? Ooh, maybe it's code for something. Aoyama. Aoyama. Hmm. Naoya's place is near there, but is that important? That's enough. This is way too creepy. I bet now you knew you would tinker with the comps and played a trick on us. I don't know. He's amazingly smart, so I think he must have meant for this to happen. Hmm. I can't figure it out from just this. I'll try the rest of these files, too. I'm gonna go find somewhere I can think. Go kill some time. Oh, you can take the comps. Some of their functions still work, so you might as well try them out. See you later, okay? Atsura leaves the area to take a closer look into the comp. I bet it's all just a prank. Atsura always acts like such a kid with stuff like this. Um, what should we do? Why don't we wander around until Atsuro's done? You and Yuzu leave the 901. Well, what should we do? We can go kill some time in Shibuya, or go somewhere else. I'm okay either way, Taiki. And thus we get dumped out into our navigation screen for the game, get a little map of the Yamanote Circle, which we're located within. Choose the location you'd like to go to next to continue the story events. Press the X button to open the comp menu, where you can save the game, among other things. Select a destination from the list to move there and advance the story. You can press the X button here to open the comp menu. As you can see, we have a selection of options here. From the comp menu, use the menu icons to access various functions. To save the game, select the save icon here and bring up the save menu. It is recommended that you save the game frequently, and yes, you probably should save the game before doing anything that will advance time, which is most anything in this game. More help text can be found at the bottom touch screen. Now press the X button to access the comp's main screen. Alright, let's do so. As you can see, we have a couple of empty folders here. I wonder what these could be. But options that are relevant here, we have profile options here. We can review information about people we've met, uh, what their online handles are, how old they are. Atsuro Kihara, high school classmate and best friend of Cullen. Acquainted with Naya through programming forums online before meeting Cullen. Striving to become a programmer, calls himself Naya's number one apprentice. And Yuzu over here, Yuzu Tanikawa, childhood friends with Cullen since grade school, also knows his cousin Naoya, still friends with Cullen now that they're in high school together. Atsura likes to call her Yuhu. As you progress through the game, these little profiles, not only will we unlock more of them, but they will fill in with more information as we learn more about the characters. Here you can check the mail screen to review any of your emails. Incoming messages can be read here. Select an email and open it by pressing the A button. Press left and right on the control pad to switch between email folders. Nothing too interesting here at the moment, and honestly, nothing you ever have to come back to check out unless the game tells you to. This is just if you want to review certain aspects or information that you got. Over here, we've got the config menu. A uh, couple things I'd recommend. Uh, obviously, would recommend uh, turning the game speed up, which uh, I believe uh, one is the fastest. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, we can also increase the movement speed to fast. This was something that was not present in uh, Devil Survivor Vanilla, the... Game speed there was quite slow. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just checking to see. Uh, whatever. Uh, message skip. If you hold L and R together, uh, you can skip through messages a lot faster. Pretty much no reason to not have this on. And direction uh, changes the orientation, uh, which the directional pad uh, interfaces with the isometric perspective of battles, which we'll go over when we get into them. I'm just going to keep it at the default because that's how I've always played the game, and changing it now would probably confuse me. If you are against the voice acting in this game, you can also turn the voices off, but I think they actually did a pretty good job with this, so I'm going to keep it on. And of course, we can save our game here. As you can see, I've got my clear data files. We're just going to ignore those for right now and create a new file in Data1. Okay, and... 
Before we go forward with the game, a couple other things to mention. We can press the Y button to bring up a clock that allows us to skip time without interfacing with any events. Uh, there are very, very rare situations where you can get into moments in the game where you have no events you can interact with that'll actually advance the clock, and that's what this is here for, but I honestly would never recommend using this, unless you're doing some kind of speedrun and you just want to skip all non-essential events. So, we'll never see that in action, I just want to draw attention to it now. Navigating the areas around here, every area allows you to look around... This place is full of trendy people in unique fashions, wishing to see and be seen. Also, uh, now that I actually see that in action, I know that the uh, number three is uh, the fastest, so let's uh, get that on. <laughs> Listen to people here. Are you hitting on me? Who's the other chicken? Maybe we'll talk. Oh, how rude. And we can also talk with our party. <sighs> Got some time to kill while Sura unlocks that protection. What should we do? As you can see, most of the dialogue options on the map screen do not provoke a voice response. It is the actual events that uh, give us responses. As the game is showing us, any event marked with a clock icon consumes 30 minutes and advances the game. Now, these events at the start of the game are actually mutually exclusive. We cannot watch both of them in a normal game. Of course, the obvious thing we could do is just save and reload, but we have the wonders of emulation here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make a save state real quick. And that'll cause the game to hang for a moment, but nay, no big deal. And now let's get back into it and watch the scene with Atsuro. Hey, don't be so impatient. Even with my skills, I can't finish my analysis that fast. You're not as good as you claim to be, then? Don't be ridiculous. Now you wrote this encryption program. A normal man couldn't solve this in a week, but I'll have it done in a matter of hours. All right, all right. You're now his best apprentice. We get it. That's exactly right, Yuhu. Don't call me Yuhu. <laughs> Let's go. He can stare at that screen until his eyeballs explode. <laughs> anyway, I'll be a bit longer, so go find something to do. I get the feeling that bickering is a bit of a normal dynamic between Atsuru and Yuzu, but as you can see, the event with that purple-haired man, that has gone away. You can only see it at 1600 hours. So what we're going to do now in order to see both scenes is we're just going to reload that state I made and suddenly teleport back to the game. Now, uh, I haven't drawn too much attention to this, but yes, I am playing this on an emulator using the Citra 3DS emulator. And the emulation is uh, perfect as far as visuals go, but you'll probably notice audio hiccups every here and there. Uh, that's just kind of comes with the territory. Funnily enough, based on uh, the impressions that I've seen, the sequel to this game, Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker, does not have those issues, so I'm not sure why this game emulates so poorly, or relatively poorly, but hey, that's what happens. Let's look around here. This area bustles with many types of people. A group of people in orange are speaking. Hmm. Aren't those the Shomenkai freaks? Do they ever shut up about God? It's so boring. Hmm. Wonder what uh, this is all about. Let's uh, check out this mystery question mark, man. Shinjuku, Kanagicho. As usual, Japan's largest shopping district is bustling. Now, what should we do? Want to go watch a movie or do some karaoke? Hmm, Atsuro might call us, so we should go somewhere with cell phone reception. You notice a suspicious group wearing bizarre outfits standing in the road. A man who appears to be the leader is making a speech from a podium. And lo, the smiting from God against the Tower of Babel returns! Oh man, what's with that bunch of weirdos? Now, along with our Shomunkai, let us bring the world together! With the power of the internet, the world will be as one once more! The power of the internet, huh? <laughs> Give me a break. Are you interested in this? Actually, I kind of find his uh, discussions to be rather topical and intriguing, but uh, let's uh, just uh, give the simplistic answer and say, sure. Huh. I didn't think you would be. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it in a bad way. 
Well, even I think it's great how the internet lets you connect with the world. But all this stuff about gods and bringing the world together, I don't know. Ugh, why are we even talking about this? Let's go somewhere else. For these next three days, believers in the power of the internet will gather in Tokyo. All members are welcome to take part. Believe in His Majesty and prepare for the ordeal. That is when we shall... The speech continues. Yeah, this game was uh, kind of just released uh, right around the time social media was really starting to blow up and proliferate the internet, but before the uh, internet became the dominant landscape of uh, modern culture. So kind of uh, intriguing some of the conversations that uh, occur surrounding the internet in this game. And some of the points uh, become have become kind of hilarious in hindsight, or perhaps harsher, depending on how you look at it, while some of them uh, seem surprisingly precognizant. Anyways, now we have a new interaction action in a motesando with Yuzu, so let's talk to her. The stores around here are really fashionable. They're all, like, so mature, you know? I used to go to Harajuku all the time, but I always wanted to fit in at a motesando. Hey, do you think I stick out like a sore thumb here? Oh no, come on, Yuzu, you're super trendy. You fit right in, and I'm not just saying that to flatter you. Or maybe I am. Anyway. No way! Really? Aw, thanks! Don't you think that Harajuku and Emote Sando have different images? I'll pretend like I actually know anything about these uh, districts of Japan, and just say, uh, yeah, totally. Emote Sando feels more like Aoyama's style than Harajuku's. Speaking of Aoyama... Hey, what time is it right now? Oh, it's, uh, you know, 1630. Why, is something wrong? 1630? Uh, I was just thinking about that email in the comp. You know, the one about someone being attacked by a carnivorous beast? It said the attack happened in the Aoyama area, right? It's around the right time, too. At that moment, several police cars zoomed down the street, sirens wailing. Those police cars! They're heading towards Aoyama! Ah, <laughs> There's no way it could be true, right? <gasps> hey, Naoya's apartment is in Aoyama, right? Shouldn't we go check it out? Hmm, yeah, you have a point. L let's go, let's go. E yeah, I'm a little scared, but he should be okay. Let's go. That'd honestly be kind of disappointing if, uh, now he was killed before we even got a chance to meet him, but, uh, let, let's look around here. Just off the main street is a quiet residential area. Stylish stores hide here. Good day. Hot today, isn't it? Hmm. Not really anything interesting to be said here. Uh, the party talk periodically updates. Hey, Taiki, looks like something happened in Naoyama. We should check it out. I'm probably not going to check all of this text, because, to be honest, most of it's just for flavor, and it's not terribly interesting. Very rarely do you learn anything interesting from these, and the ones that you actually do get interesting dialogue from are usually specially marked with blue text, but we'll uh, cover that when we actually see it. For now, let's go to the Aoyama residential area. It seems that the police were going to the building now you lives in after all. The scene is roped off by the police, and a crowd of onlookers has gathered. Someone else who just has, who has just arrived approaches you. Naoya? I'm surprised to see you. What are you doing here? Ah, man, okay, good, good. Our cousin is fine. He is fine. Safe? Oh, you mean the incident in the building. Of course that's what we mean. What's going on, anyway? That weird email you made us read made us all jumpy. I see. You're right. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to frighten you. The person who was eaten was a student like yourselves. He lived next door to me. He was eaten? No way. Is what that email said really true? But we got the email before the incident happened. What does this mean? Oh man, it had to be telling the future. Also, uh, now you sound super casual about this with that extremely devious look on his face. Your thought process never ceases to amaze me. Usually, one would suspect that the one who sent the email carried out the murder. No wonder you're my cousin. 
I understand why the two of you came here. But our meeting here is an accident. We shouldn't be talking like this. Hurry and find Atsuro immediately. It's going to begin soon. Begin? What are you talking about? Now he looks away, and he seems to have no intention of answering any more questions. There isn't much time left. Listen carefully to me, both of you. Do not turn away from what is about to happen now. Do not be afraid to stand up against it. That is when the door of truth will open. Overcome your fate. Oh, wait a second. Now he walks away. He's gone. Something didn't seem right with him, huh? I wonder what's wrong. Just then, your cell phone rings. The caller ID says, Atsuro. All right, well, <laughs> geez, Sophie's choice here, right? Yo, I figured out how to crack the encryption on those comps. I need yours so I can unlock them. Meet me in front of the Electric Museum in Shibuya. Um, why don't we meet up with Atsuro? I'm all confused from everything that's happened so suddenly. Maybe Atsuro's figured something out on his end. Well, one can only hope, Yuzu. One can only hope. That was awfully cryptic from Naoya, though. He kind of just blew us off and uh, left us with uh, quite a bit to chew on with his parting words. Well, perhaps we'll figure out what we mean when Atsuro manages to crack these comps, but what's this about a battle? Hmm... The Electric Museum is north of Shibuya, among the Yamanote Line, east of Miyashita Park. Yo, what took you guys so long? How far away did you go when you were killing time? Oh, you know, we just went to visit my cousin. Huh? You guys went to see Naoya? Oh, yeah. Well... Yuzu tells Atsuro what happened in Naoyama. She also mentioned how what happened matched the email you received and what Naoya said. Wait! What? Are you saying that the email actually came true? Hmm. Anyway, if you ran into Naoya, why didn't you call me? I had some stuff to ask him. Sorry, so much was going on that we kind of forgot you. Oh well, that's okay. Bringing it up now isn't going to change anything. Man, Atsuro is so cool about stuff like that. Uh, this is why he's a bro. So, what's going on? Is what was written in that email actually coming true? Come on! There's no way an email can predict the future. Are you sure you didn't just fall for one of Naoya's pranks? Uh, does he seem like the pranking type? Let me, let me, uh, let, let me ask you that and uh, just chew on that for a second, Atsuru. When you put it that way... Well, Naoya's human too. He must have a sense of humor. But someone really did get killed. The police were there. I can't believe they'd be a part of his joke. Hmm... If Naoya was telling the truth, that email wasn't a warning, right? Unless someone really did predict the future. <laughs> it's probably just a coincidence. Hmm... You know, there is more. Perhaps if uh, more of the events described in the email actually happen, that would indicate it really is telling the future. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. It mentioned an explosion and a blackout, too. If it really was predicting the future, it would be odd if those don't happen. Still, they seem pretty unlikely. What? But... Who cares anyway? Once I crack these comps and look inside, it'll all make sense. Hmm... Okay, though I'm still not convinced. So tell us what you found out, Atsuro. Yeah, well... I was completely fooled. I think now you knew I'd try to get inside one myself. It seems these three comps are always monitoring each other, so I can't crack one alone. See, a comp has this always-on, wireless feature that allows it to exchange data with... Oh, my head! Enough with the explanation! Just hurry up and do it! Man, you never change. Anyway, I'm gonna unlock the systems, okay? Turn your comps on, you guys! While waiting for Atsuro to finish, you look up and see someone who looks like Naoya. Although Shibuya is a popular area, the street is empty, and he seems to stand out. His handsome face is expressionless, but gives off a cold feeling. Okay, done. I'm restarting the comps.
Decryption confirmed. Booting program. Condition green. Demon summoning program ready to boot. Booting demon summoning program. Peaceful days died. Let's survive. Whoa! Monsters came out of the comms! Ah! Uh, what is this? Ah, uh, I thought I was going to suffocate in there. So, this is the human world? Hmm. Then these humans must be the ones who summon me. And yes, the demons in this game do not get full voice acting. Instead, they have a variety of stock moans and groans and stuff that they cycle through. A bit disappointing, but uh, I guess uh, they felt it wasn't necessary for the amount of dialogue that they had in this game. We will fight then. If I win, I'll have my freedom. Let's go. Mission start. Rather unceremoniously, we're thrown into our first battle. <laughs> Get ready. I'm not gonna let you guys go. You have to die so I can go free. <laughs> ah! Don't come any closer! And as Yuzu screams in terror, we're thrust into our very first battle. There's quite a bit of information to parse here, but we're just going to, uh do the normal attacks. As you can expect from our first battle, there is not too many options available to us. We can attack and we can guard, and guarding is a waste of time, so we're just going to attack. And this fight, uh, or rather this battle, there are a variety of ways this can go, but it's essentially scripted. Help! Atsuru! Yuzu! Oh, damn it! We're coming! Mm -hmm. Wow, pretty tough for a human anyway. Hmm, what's that skill she's using? Ah, complete reset there. She's back to full health. Yar, humans are tasty demon food. Whoa, what are you? And thus, Atsuro is thrust into his first battle. Atsuro, uh, he seems to be a bit hardier than Yuzu. He has a little bit more HP. Not as much MP, though. I wonder what he could possibly use the latter for. But yeah, he also hits just a little bit harder than her. Uh, maybe if we're lucky. Ah, no. Low roll there. But uh, also, I noticed we had those extra turns there. What the? That should have hurt me way more than it did. This is weird. Humans are supposed to be soft and chewy. Not hard. Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of interesting that we're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with monsters. I wonder why we're up to square off with these things. Fight me, humans! Me win! Huh. Seems to be getting a little agitated over there. Be careful! You've got to get them before they get you! You have to fight! You know, I can't help but feel like things are a little unfair or that I'm kind of the odd man out here. Yuzu is facing off against a tiny woman who probably comes up to her waist when she's standing on the ground. Atsuro is facing off against a flying house cat. Meanwhile, I have to throw hands with a werewolf who has a billy club. Sometimes life just isn't fair. But, once again, we don't really have uh, too many options here, so we have no choice but to feebly throw out a punch. And we actually got rather lucky there. That critical hit could have potentially uh, robbed us an opportunity to kill this kobold, but it did not. And we get our first victory. Notching our victory gets us EXP and Maka. I wonder what we use Maka for. EXP, on the other hand, I mean, if you played any RPG, you know how EXP works. You get enough, you level up, you can increase your stats. Or rather, the main character gets to choose which uh, stat his points go into. For my character build, I'm going to be investing on magic power, or rather, investing in magic power on even levels, and then I will be focusing on agility first, then vitality second when I've met certain thresholds for agility. Now, uh, I don't plan to run a physical build for my main character, but there will come a time where I'll need to invest some poison to strength, and I'll cover why when it becomes relevant. Ugh. <sighs> me lost! If me defeated by one who summons me, become master. This called contract, only heard of him. Me kobold, demon of war, to meet you, nice. The monster disappears, mumbling incoherently. 
did we beat that thing? Our attacks work against them. But could it be because of the comps? We can win. We can't die here. All right. Welcome to the comp tutorial. Use attack command to strike foes. You can attack any square adjacent to you. To attack a distant foe, get closer by using move. End will complete your turn. All right, so now we've actually uh, gotten to our turn, and we can explore the meat of uh, actually playing the game. Devil Survivor, in contrast to most other Mega Ten games, which are more traditional turn-based RPGs, actually has a turn-based tactic-style interface. You move around on a battlefield, close in on enemies, and attack them to engage in little micro-battles that uh, play out much like a standard turn-based affair from Shin Megami Tensei does, but it can only last up to two rounds of combat before you're thrust back to the main screen. Now, I could move around and take on some of these demons, but I actually want Yuzu and Atsuro to uh, win their fights individually. But uh, I will move in and attack the Pixie for a couple of attacks. You'll notice that when we uh, go on the offensive against the Pixie here, uh, we gain bonus initiative. What does that do? Well, if you get positive initiative, it gives you extra points of agility purely for the purpose of determining your turn order. At this point in the game, having that initiative bonus right there essentially guarantees that we will get the first turn first action in an engagement, and I don't want the uh, Pixie to die before Yuzu gets a chance to hit it, so we're just going to guard here, take a light little bit of damage, but as you can see, guarding uh, reduces the amount of damage we can take by about 50%, and it has another uh, potential effect that will become relevant in future battles when we need to be more mindful of what we're doing. Once again, we'll have Yuzu go into action against the Pixie, and just launch her physical attacks against it. Hmm. Notice that the Pixie does not have an extra turn there. Extra turns are a bit of a weird mechanic to explain, but essentially you can gain extra turns in combat by either having high agility or hitting enemies' weaknesses or nullifying attacks coming from enemies, giving you an additional action in combat, which often allows you to close out fights sooner and remove problematic enemies from the field entirely. Yuzu winning her battle here, of course, gets her level up, and she gets one point of agility. Yuzu uh, herself uh, focuses towards a bit of a magic build. She doesn't have much of an emphasis on strength, but she does put a decent amount into agility and vitality when she's not boosting her magic. Ugh, can't believe I lost to a human. But I'll abide by the contract. I have to lend you my powers. I'm the fairy pixie. Don't you dare waste my time. Or rather, waste me. Sorry, putting extra words in her mouth. The monster disappears, mumbling incoherently. So, that's Yuzu's turn here. Atsuro is absolutely going to dumpster this Kabuso here. He has a decent strength. He has the initiative. This thing does not stand a chance. Boom. And with that cleared out, Atsuro gets the EXP he needs to level up. Atsuro has an emphasis on strength in vitality with... Uh, agility in a very narrow third in comparison to Vitality, but he has relatively low magic. This won't become apparent until later, though, when we start racking up a few levels for everybody. Yeah, surprised I could actually be defeated. Uh, I've heard that if I lose, I, have, I become your servant. Oh, well. I'm the Monster Kabuso. Pleased to meet you. The monster disappears, mumbling incoherently. And with that, mission complete. For completing story missions in Devil Survivor, in addition to getting bonus Maka awarded at the end of the fight, you also get a nice, generous helping of experience. Uh, with getting kills for everybody, we get enough for everybody to level up a second time. Very nice. Going into our screen here, I'll be using the odd number levels to invest into agility and vitality, so let's just bring our agility up. The reason I like a magic and agility build is because going before the enemies and hitting them with powerful magic will allow me to avoid taking more damage from them, which means I can kind of slack on my vitality. I'll uh, go over what all the stats do in due time. I'll also be writing up posts on the forums that I post this Let's Play to, explaining those, and I can link those in the description for the video if anybody's interested in seeing them and is not already discovering these through said forum posts. With that said... I... I'm still alive. We're all still alive! Ugh, that was so scary! What's going on? What was that? Atsuro, what did you do? I don't know either. I just undid the encryption. The program activated itself. Then the comp is what made this happen just now? 
That doesn't make any sense! That's just impossible! Let's go to the police. We can't hold on to something this dangerous. Hmm, hold on. I don't think that's a good idea. We, we should take a closer look at these. I mean, what if there are more monsters like that? Check them out! What more is there to see? Calm down, Yuhu. I think he's right. Huh? What are you saying? What do we do if demons come out of these things again? Will you settle down a little? I know why you're freaking out. I was there too, you know. But even after what just happened, is it right to throw everything out immediately? We don't even know if that's the safest thing to do at this point. Hmm. Now you did say we want to keep these. Uh, he did say that we would need them. I'm going to take a deeper look into these comps, okay? Y yeah, okay. But if something comes out, we're making a run for it. I've had it with this. Atsura connects the comp to his laptop and begins examining the files. Ah, I get it. So that's why. What? Did you figure something out? Yeah. First, this process is named the Demon Summoning Program. Demon? You mean, like, from books and myths and all that stuff? How should I know? I can't wrap my head around how a computer can summon them. Hmm. Well, you know, typically demons are tied to ancient rituals, uh, mysticism and all that. Rituals? You mean like in fantasy manga? I suppose it's possible to convert the spells and procedures to programs, but... Anyway, the other function I found in this comp is named the Harmonizer. So... it... harmonizes? I suppose so. The word harmonize means to match or adjust. It's similar to the summoning program, and I have no idea what principles are behind it. But it seems to match some wavelength so that our attacks work on demons. And likewise, it attunes their attacks to lessen the damage we take from them. <sighs> I'm totally lost. I don't get any of this. What is Nelia trying to do? Summoning demons, protecting us from them? What does he want us to do? Hmm... Maybe he wants us to fight demons? But why? Are we supposed to bring about world peace or something? Huh? Wait a sec, that's it! What? Don't tell me it's really for world peace. No, it's not that. Do you guys remember that email? The one with those predictions? Yeah. I thought about how the comp's functions would work in conjunction with it. Well, take this for example. The death in Aoyama was blamed on an animal attack, right? Huh? Yeah? What if it wasn't an animal, but a demon, like the ones that appeared earlier? W what are you saying? If you're trying to scare us, knock it off! I'm not trying to scare you. I want to sort this thing out. Okay, to start out, if the email delivered to our comps really did predict that, then we would have known when and where the attack was due to occur before it happened. So if we wanted to, we could have been there at that moment. In addition, the comps are modified to summon demons and fight against them. So, what conclusions can we draw from this? Hmm, we could probably prevent a, have prevented that uh, fatality if we were there with demons in tow. Yeah, that's what I think too. Huh? There's been a lot of weird stuff in the city recently. The internet's full of rumors. There have always been strange things happening, but there have been a lot of them lately. What if they were all ignored by the public, but they were actually caused by demons? And what if we can use these comps to fight those demons? <gasps> then, are you saying these comps were made to fight the demons who are doing all this? Yeah, that is, if demons are really the cause of these things. I'm so not doing that. Why don't we just give these back to Naoya or somebody else? Hmm, I don't know. I feel like now he has an endgame with this. He he seemed like he knew something like this was going to happen. Hmm, a little concerning when you put it like that. No, that's not what I mean, but... Now he's really good at planning things in advance. I don't know why he chose us to have these, but there must be a good reason behind it. I mean, I don't want to have to fight monsters like that again either. But... If we get attacked by demons like the other victims, I can't give this comp up. Without them, we're just normal people. We don't stand a chance against demons. If, if you're right, Atsuro, 
and this weird stuff is being caused by demons, and even if these comps were made to fight those demons, then why us? The police should be the ones dealing with this stuff. We can give them to the police, but if we do, we'll never get them back. That said, do you think we can really protect ourselves without them, Yuhu? I am sick of all this! Why is this happening? Uh-huh. What's wrong? Why are you staring above my head? Is something there? Well, as a matter of fact, ever since the battle concluded, we have these enigmatic numbers floating over our heads. I wonder what these could possibly be. You explain that ever since the battle, you've seen numbers above people's heads. Most people walking by have a seven, but the three of you have a one. A number over our heads? What are you talking about? I don't see anything, but you look serious. What's going on? Man, is that because of the comp too? Ugh, we know so little about all this. I feel like my head's about to blow up. Hey, why don't we go back to Naoya's place after all? All this about the comp, the email, and everything else, we really need him to tell us. Hmm. Well, there's no guarantee he'll even be there, but at the same time, what other options do we have? It's at least worth checking. Yeah, I need to talk to Naoya too. Let's go to Aoyama. Alright, and we now have Atsuru in tow, so let's just do a quick party talk here. Let's go talk to Naoya and ask him for more info. He lives in Aoyama, right? And yeah, that's all he's got to say. So once again, we return to Aoyama. You'll notice that that battle there consumed two units of time. We're at 1830 hours now. Huh. At 1900, there was supposed to be a blackout. I wonder. Well, let's go look for Naoya first. It seems the police are still investigating. Police barriers are still up. Man, we'll never get near Naoya's room like this. Hey, over there! Yuzu points towards a mailbox filled with newspapers. Huh, isn't that Naoya's mailbox? Huh, yeah, it looks like he hasn't been to his home in quite some time. Might have been lucky to see him. I suppose so. It looks like he hasn't been to his apartment for quite a while. Suddenly, all three of your comps' emails alerts go off. Well, <laughs> once again, uh, not really ha much in the way of choice here. The illusion of choice in video games. Now ya? Hmm. Huh. It seems you've used the comp. Well done. I figured that the general confusion should be dying down by now. I gave you three the comps because you will need the powers of the demons. If you want to survive, you'll have to learn how to use them. I don't have much time right now. Head to Aoyama Cemetery. You'll meet a person there who will influence your future actions. Okay. And also, hmm, from the DS admin, what's this? Congratulations! You've earned the qualifications to become a demon tamer. You can now summon a demon at any time as an ally and command it. Please note that contracting with the demons only occurs during the initial booting of this program. Defeating demons summoned via other comps does not apply either. Also, a tutorial function has been added to assist you in battle. Please make use of it. Have a safe and pleasant experience in your new life as a demon tamer. So chipper about us, uh, summoning hellish abominations. What? Who's writing these? Can he hear what we're saying or something? This is crazy! Ha! Now his insight is his greatest strength. He's a genius when it comes to knowing what people are going to do next. Anyway, did you guys read the other email? Hmm. So, Demon Tamer. Wonder what this business is about. Yeah, I wanted to point that out. Remember what those demons said during the battle? About submitting to us? Contracts? Lending their power? Sound familiar? Wait a sec. Uh, I can't keep up with all this. It's all so unreal. Um, so basically, the demons we fought can now be summoned from the comps? And they'll be our allies? Yeah! But I can't say for sure until we actually try it out. After we got that email, something called Teams got added to the comp menu. Maybe this is why Naoya entrusted us with these comps. Jeez! If that's what he wanted all along, he could have just told us. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Sometimes he's so smart, I can't understand him. In any case, the email from Naoya, it said to go to Aoyama Cemetery, right? It mentions someone who will influence our actions, but 
Who could that be? Sounds like someone we're destined to meet. Do you think it'll be human? Who knows? Considering all that's happened, anyone would be suspicious. Well, the email did indeed say person. Also, I'd just like to point out that now he was upfront with us about all of this, he kind of sounded like a crazy person, so maybe it was better that we learned by example. Yeah, you're right. It does say person after all. This is now yeah. He would have said monster or someone if he meant otherwise. Fine. I'd rather ask Naoya about this than sit around feeling scared and stupid. Well, I guess I've got no choice. If you two are going, I'm coming too. Let's go! I didn't bring it up earlier because Yuzu was getting all emotional. But the skill set function looks like it'll let us use spells and such too. If we have to fight demons again, it'll help to set our comps to let us use them. It looks like there's a skill set for each of us right now. That's a total of four skills. You can change them by messing around with the team setup option. And yes, let's take a look at our team setup option. So as uh, Atsuro pointed out, and as the game will tell us here, this is the team's menu. Here you select leaders and their demons to enter battle. You can have up to four teams. Highlight a character and press the Y button to change the skills set to that character. So yes, we can take a look at our skill set here, and the game has uh, very generously given us a selection of skills to start with, although not too much to begin with, really. We also, in our passives, have Leader Soul. Protect ally from lethal damage, if not lethal to self. Interesting. Uh, everybody has uh, one command skill set to them. Uh, myself, I have Agi set. Atsuro has Zio set, and Yuzu has uh, gotten Dia, and she can function as a healer. We've also got the Kobold that I've defeated uh, set to my party, which I'm actually going to switch that out with uh, Atsuro's Kabuso, since uh, he'll pair better with me if we combine our efforts with uh, fire magic, whereas uh, Kobold's Aggravate will complement... Uh, Atsuro's strength quite nicely. Aggravate is a special ability of the Kobold that allows him to give guaranteed critical hits to the team for a single hit, which is quite useful right now. Additionally, the Pixie has healing magic of her own, and if she levels up, she could potentially have Zeo at her disposal also. And the Kabuso, we've already pointed out that he has Agi to pair up with me, but also he has a skill called Animal Leg. What is that? Replenish move after attack. Hmm. And likewise, the Pixie also has a skill called Charm. Chance of side benefit, eh? And it heals at a range. Interesting. We're gonna have to see how all this plays out in an actual battle. But first order of business, let's actually get to Aoyama Cemetery and see who this destined person is. Here we are. So who would be at a place like this? Don't tell me it's a ghost. I feel like there's something out there. All those graves. Hang on a second. Aoyama Cemetery. That rings a bell. Hmm. Oh, man. This was in the email, wasn't it? Huh? Ah! Well, was that an explosion? It sounded like it came from the other side of this forest. An explosion in Aoyama's cemetery around 1900. It's just like what the email said. Look, something's coming. Ugh, that woman. Never knew humans could have such power. Wendigo, wait! <laughs> Fools. You're nothing like that woman. Do you really think you, could, you puny things can stop me? Oh dear. Uh, Lady Amane, I'm so sorry. Oh no, he killed Yuri Lowenthal. Who will play the role of Spider-Man now? Ah! Hmm, that number over his head. When he died, it disappeared. Hmm? Humans are pests! Kill one and another takes its place. I'll kill you all. I've found you, Wendigo. I won't let you get away this time. Ugh. So the wench thinks she can catch up to me. Hey! You need to run away! It's too dangerous! Forget her, Atsuro! That demon killed someone! We have to run! Now!
What the? How many demons are there? All right, so we are thrust into another battle. Our options are to defeat all demons, to win, or let ourselves die and suffer defeat. Also, it is required that we dispatch everyone. Not every battle requires that you dispatch your entire team, though obviously for most of the game there is little reason not to. How we're going to set this up is, uh, let me see... Actually, I should be able to... Let's just, uh, you can, uh, back out of the menu to get a quick view of the battlefield and see what your options are. And what I want to do is, yes, I want to move myself over to hit that kobold. And, uh, as you can see, kobolds are weak to fire, so Kabuso and myself will have great effectiveness against them. Meanwhile, we're going to have, uh, Atsuro make his way down to this kobold. And we're going to have Yuzu just, uh, hang out over here and head towards the kobold in the bottom right corner. Uh, Yuzu only has three moves, so she cannot cover distances as effectively as Atsuro and the main character can. So, uh, she will take longer to get to places, but that is not always a problem she needs to suffer. And I just want to make sure I've got Atsuro positioned correctly. Whoops, uh, what, what, what buttons are parsing? Now let me see here, <laughs> sorry. Got, my hands got a little shifted there. Okay, okay, yes, and he is in the right spot. Alright, everyone is set up properly, but how are we going to deal with that Wendigo? He looks tough, I mean, let's just, uh, go over to him real quick and... Yeesh, level 19? We're not even over level 3 yet. How could we possibly hope to defeat him? But hey, that, that woman, that priestess, she's level 31. Yeesh, she's powerful. Hmm, maybe this isn't so hopeless after all. Alright, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna live through this. You there, it's dangerous here. You must evacuate immediately. But how? We're surrounded! Those comps... Why do they have them? Hey! Say something! I guess I have no choice. I'll cooperate with you. But Wendigo is far too powerful a foe for you right now. Leave him to me. I will follow your orders. Direct me as you please. The Priestess joined your party. So yes, we don't have to rely on an AI to do the work for us. We get to directly control the Priestess and have her take out the Wendigo. The comp has activated the Harmonizer for battle mode. Functions will be limited. The, there's a message on the comp's screen! This must be the tutorial that email mentioned! They showed up when we were fighting too! I guess some functions won't be usable. Hey! Are there any functions you can't use on your comp anymore? Hmm... Hey, yeah, the floating numbers are gone. Those numbers you mentioned back at the Electric Museum? What the hell are they? Oh, wait, it looks like there's more to the tutorial. Each demon has, a special, has special skills called race skills. There are two kinds, automatic activation skills and command activation skills. This is technically false. There's actually three kinds, although probably for the uh, two of the three kinds, it probably lumps them as automatic activation skills, but we'll go over this with due time. Use the race skills to gain an upper hand in battle. You can view the race skills effect with the help menu. So I've got to use these demon skills, eh? Well, whatever it takes to survive. Ugh, we've got no choice but to fight. I'm glad we have demons on our side, I guess. So, starting this off, you'll notice that Yuzu got her turn first. And the reason for that, if you mouse over everyone, or rather cursor over everybody, uh, you'll see that her speed stat is 52. Speed is a statistic inherent of units on the field that is not tied to their agility in combat. Instead, speed determines the amount of delay they suffer from taking actions in battle. Everything you do, from moving to attacking to summoning to using race skills, all of those create delay. The higher your speed is, the less that the that the less delay those actions causes. Speed is an inherent attribute of, attribute of characters. All characters in this game, you cannot modify it at all. So some characters will always go first in battle and get their actions quicker doing the same things as other characters. 
But there is one instance where a character's speed can go up, and we'll cover that when we get through it. One thing to note is that demons have speed stats also, but I'm going to be completely honest with you, just ignore that. Uh, the game cheats the, the initiative system for the AI horribly, or I suppose I should say the action initiative system, or however you want to put it. Basically, the amount of uh, turn delay enemies get uh, does not at all tie to their speed stat. Uh, it just is whatever the game decides is an appropriate amount of delay to make them a credible threat to you. With that all said and done, let's have Yuzu move over this way. And I want to move over to this kobold. With the combined bite of uh, Kabuso, a team consists of three units. You, the summoner, and two contracted demons. Be cautious of the following. The leader is in the middle. If the leader is defeated, the whole team is destroyed. So long as the minions live, the leader takes de less damage. If you defeat a leader first, the EXP and Maka of the remaining monsters is halved. If it, it is your, to your advantage to kill the minions flanking their leader. So yes, as long as we have this Kabuso alive, we don't have to worry about taking too much damage from these kobolds. Also, our Augies will just absolutely rip through them. But be very mindful, we have a limited amount of MP, and at this point in the game, we have no way to restore it. So once we're out, we're out. But that should not become a factor in this fight. Working together with Kabuso, we just absolutely obliterate this guy, get a nice chunk of experience. Kabuso learns Zan from leveling up, and we can take another point of magic. As you can see, we get three additional MP from uh, taking uh, magic as a stat, and that gets added to both our uh, current MP as well as the maximum, so we actually do get a little bit of a restore whenever we level up, getting more MP to fire. All, the natural MP we get uh, from leveling up also increases our current as well as our maximum. It seems that defeating demons summoned by others does not enter them into a contract. Alright, but as you can see, we can move again. Normally, you can't take actions, uh, or rather, you can't move after having already done so and engaging in battle when in a single turn. But our Kabuso has the race skill Animal Leg, which refreshes our ability to move whenever we engage in battle. This is the first kind of automatic skill that the game mentioned earlier, and this is what I call a conditional automatic skill. This is one that only takes effect when the condition for it is fulfilled. There are other automatic skills that I call non-conditional uh, automatic skills, and those skills are just simply always in effect, regardless of whether or not you fill any particular condition for them. Them. Though it is possible to uh, activate non-conditional automatic skills in situations where you can't actually benefit from the from them, but that's uh, for two specific skills I can think of. Anyways, with this extra point of move, let's move towards that pixie and get uh, closer and closer so that we can engage in a fight sooner. Kobold, of course, has Aggravate, which gives us one guaranteed critical hit, perfect for a physically aligned fighter like Atsuro. Plus, the Kobold is not weak to Zeo, so it wouldn't do too much damage to him. Have you noticed when the words extra turn appear? Those with extra turn displayed are at an advantage and will receive more turns. This is how extra turn works. Higher speed grants higher chances of getting extra turn. When the game says speed here, it means agility. Not exactly the uh, most accurate translation of this dialogue here. The attacking side gets them more often than the defenders. This is due to the initiative bonus, which again adds to your uh, agility for the purposes of determining turn order, as well as extra turns. Your actions during battle may also give you an extra turn of, or cancel your opponents. Exploit a foe's weakness, land a critical attack. Use these tactics to increase your chances of getting or canceling foe's extra turns. A miss or an attack that is resisted, absorbed, or reflected may aid your foe. Pay close attention to your foe's status on the comp's top screen to avoid this. The game does- So, to make their extra turns disappear and get them for ourselves, we've got to hit them where it hurts or land a critical attack. Thank you, Atsuro. But yes, uh, what the game neglects to mention there is that if you uh, nullify an enemy's attack or resist it or whatever, you can also gain extra turns from that, as well as the enemies will lose their extra turns. So it's uh, beneficial to have good defenses and maintain strong offenses against whatever you're fighting. We're going to launch our critical strikes at this kobold here. Do some pretty decent damage. Alright, now that we don't have the critical augmenting his strength anymore, uh, I believe Zeo will deal slightly more damage. Zeo has a higher base damage than our regular physical attack at this point. If the Kobold actually hit, that would have been a successful fight. Uh, one thing to note about magic in this game is that it never misses. Uh, physical attacks have the chance to miss. Magic does not, so that is something that is very, very helpful about magic in this game. 
All right, now we have the priestess turn. We're just going to have her rush the Wendigo and take him out. Wendigo, go back from whence you came. Am I seeing things, or is she holding a comp? Now, it is technically possible to defeat the Wendigo with one of your main characters, although extremely unlikely on a fresh new game. Uh, the, this game, like many other Mega Ten games, employs level scaling, which means not only do you deal less damage to the Wendigo as his level exceeds yours, he also deals considerably more to you, so it is unwise to attempt to fight him with your other characters. As you can see, uh, he can't even survive a single Maragi from the Priestess. Ugh, humans. I've learned your smells. This is far from over. I won't let you escape. Please excuse me, I must go after that demon. Now, I believe you could, uh, theoretically, uh, do it with a, or rather, uh, just have the priestess do regular physical attacks against the Wendigo and potentially lower him to a point where your main character could just run up and uh, hit him with a couple Agi spells, uh, preferably with Kabuso's aid in doing so, and potentially kill him before uh, the Priestess gets a chance to do so, and get a nice payout of experience from doing so, because since this game also scales the XP, also how, the uh, Ogre is a physically potent foe, although uh, not one that is defensively very powerful, very vulnerable to magic. As you can see, he's weak to all elements except for ice which we don't even have access to at this moment. Pixie, fairly weak, pretty easy to go down, and check it out. We've gotten another level up. We're getting pretty powerful at this point. Take another point of agility, ensuring that we'll be able to go before enemies do in the, the near future. On your allies' turns, you can open the system menu by pressing start. Here, you can check the turn order and use other convenient functions. So yeah, let's uh, open up the system menu here. As you can see, we can view, get a detailed view of the turn order, quickly uh, go over everyone and see what they are uh, capable of, when they're going to go and what they're capable of doing. You can also uh, use the shoulder buttons and change the information displayed on the top screen, like so, to see the exact stats of the enemies. So this is a good way to uh, view every enemy available in the battle, figure out who's capable of what and what is the most effective tactics for defeating them. On top of that, we've also got the victory conditions, which not too uh, special. We can change our uh, system options here, or we can suspend the game. This creates a suspend save that you can continue from and resume the battle from any given point. Unlike most suspend saves in uh, tactical RPGs, the suspend save you create is actually not deleted upon loading. So you can actually use this as an inform uh, or a in battle form of save scumming, if you so to desire. I think that's kind of cheesy, so I'm not going to do that, but it's an option you have. And believe me, there are times in this game where it's pretty tempting to do that. Let me see, uh, this guy only moves three, right? I'm actually going to wait for him to approach Yuzu, since uh, she would prefer to have the initiative here. Fortunately, that ogre, he is not uh, terribly resilient on the physical side of things. He has better vitality, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, this is looking a little dicey. Might have to uh, heal our Pixie here. Ah, they're not going to get extra turns, and we can just have the Pixie use her charm ability after battle is over. So yeah, not very good damage from there, but uh, Yuzu's just starting out. Give her a break. All right, get our HP restored there. Charm has a random chance of doing one of three effects when it heals you. It can increase your critical hit rate. It can reduce the turn delay that you uh, take this turn, allowing you to act much faster. In fact, it can completely uh, move you to the front of the turn initiative, depending on how much delay you had. Or it can fully heal you instead of uh, its normal healing, which is essentially a multi-targeted half-powered Dia. Alright, so we got one critical hit guaranteed here. One thing to note is that guarding reduces the chance that enemies will get extra turns when they strike you. That's actually kind of desirable they hit Yuzu there, because the Kobold is not going to be able to do enough damage to kill anybody. Not, especially not without uh, guaranteed crits. Alright, so let's, uh, hmm, this is looking a little dicey for Yuzu here. Uh, fortunately, there is another thing that works in our favor. Okay, okay, no, Atsuro's gonna make it before that thing gets to go again. Alright, so let's take out that Ogre and, uh, give Yuzu some breathing room here. I probably could have used Aggravate to give Cobalt a guaranteed critical hit, but it doesn't matter too much. Alright, take that guy down. 
And now this guy has been completely declawed. He's not going to do anything too threatening to us. We'll use the Zeo, because without the critical augmentation, it's going to be slightly stronger than a physical attack at this point. But uh, do uh, take note that uh, Atsuro's physical strength pretty rapidly overtakes his uh, magical capabilities. For right now, though, they're pretty even. Let's do our attacks here. We've got the initiative. We'll take him out before he gets a chance to do anything. I want this kill more for the experience to Pixie than Yuzu, though Yuzu does secure a level up and some extra strength from this. And with that, mission complete. We get our standard rewards here and level ups all around. The main reason I want Pixie to get some experience for a level up there is because she learns Zeo now, making her a much more uh, helpful combatant as she has better magic than she does physical strength. Uh, uh, we made it through. Somehow, I'm still shaking. Th there's nothing we can do about it. What we just went through, a, a person was killed. Uh, hey, the animal that attacked that person in the apartment, it was a demon, wasn't it? Hmm, so that seems like it would be too much of a coincidence if it was an animal, so... Yeah, that's what I thought. Demons, huh? Looks like we're prepared for the worst. In any case, I never thought the Shomankai would be fighting against demons. They were using comps too, and the demons didn't really scare them. That explosion must have been caused when they were fighting earlier. They knew about the demons way before we got our comps! That means the demons have been around for a long time, right? What are the Shomunkai? Ah, oh, obviously, uh, this is the newest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're superheroes. I kind of doubt that. But still, we don't know anything here. Anyway, there's no doubt that that Shomankai girl had amazing powers. That big demon Wendigo seemed to be afraid of her, too. Could she be the person mentioned in that email from Naoya? Hmm, seems pretty likely. She's definitely the most distinct person we've seen since we, had a, we struck out from Oyama. I wonder, too. She seemed really strong, and I got this feeling from her. The emails, the demons, and now the Shomunkai? Damn it! It's too much to think about! All we can do now is pray that nothing more happens today. What the? The streetlights went out! What's going on? Hmm, must be that blackout that was in the email. A blackout? Wait a minute, that's it! What's wrong, Atsuro? He's right, it's a blackout! Remember what was in that first email? It said there'd be a blackout. Is this for real? We don't know if it's city-wide, but so far it's all coming true. No way! I can't use my phone! Huh? Why not? How can you not have reception in a place like this? Is this because of the blackout? But the phone centers have their own backup power, right? This doesn't make sense. I don't know! I just can't use my phone! Ah, uh, I hope it's only temporary. I'm really tired. It's pitch black! I never thought Tokyo would be so dark at night. Hey, what are we going to do now? Wait, someone's coming. So you're all safe. It's as I thought. You're demon tamers as well. What? Aren't you that girl from a little while ago? I am Amane Kazuryu, maiden of the Shomonkai. It's nice to meet you. R right, I'm Atsuro Kihara, and she's Yuzu Tanikawa. Oh, um, hi. And this is... Rest assured, I am fully capable of introducing myself. Ahem, I am... Kihara, Tanikawa, and... I shall remember your names. The Wendigo seems to have released his minions into this cemetery. I have set a simple barrier around this place tonight. It's best if you stayed here. M minions You mean... demons? You said we should stay, but this is a cemetery. It's better than dying. Wait here until dawn, then head for the station. I must be going now. Hey, w wait! Damn, what's going on? She said to stay here until the sun came up. What should we do? She seems to know what she's talking about. I think we should go along with what she says. We don't have a choice. If she's right, then it's too dangerous to go anywhere now. B but this is a graveyard. 
Are we going to be okay? Well, I, I think we'll be fine, but just to err on the side of caution, if anything comes by, we can make a break for it. Yeah, I don't think I can go far anyway. My legs are like jelly. We don't have a choice. Well, let's take turns keeping a lookout. Ugh, I never wanted it to be morning so hard in my life. And with that, we finish off the day before in Devil Survivor Overclock. Apologies that this video has been running kind of long. I thought it would be best to get the day before out of the way, uh, first things first, uh, in a single video. And then we can do smaller videos covering the days as interesting things happen. For right now, though, we've got some more emails to read before we can go to sleep. I'm sure you noticed the Laplace mail by now. Cullen, everything in the world has causes and effects. If some intelligence could record and analyze every event simultaneously, the future would no longer be a mystery to us. Ultimately, nothing can be created nothing created by man can ever tr be truly perfect, but you can use these messages to guide your actions from now on. That's from now ya. Hmm. Seems to know a lot more than he's letting on in these mails, or even what he said to us when we saw him in person. And the Atlo must be from Atsuro, and yep. Hey, it's Atsuro. I was messing with my comp and saw that e the emails app is still working, even in the blackout. If you know someone's comp address, you can send mail directly to them. Plus, it looks like two comps will automatically learn each other's addresses when they get close to each other. It takes a while, though. I need to teach Yuzu how to use this function. Too much stuff happened today. I'm so tired. I just want it to be morning. Okay. I'm tired too, honestly. This feels kind of smug. I don't think these email responses affect much of anything, except in one particular case that I can think of, but otherwise, uh, there's not too, too much to say about the emails uh, and the replies to them. I think you can ignore them completely and it won't affect most of your options for the endings. Finally, we get one more system mail from Copsis about extra turns. A brief explanation of extra turns. Here it correctly states that the higher your agility, the easier it is to earn extra turns. The attacker is more likely to earn them. Certain actions raise your- and this is just going over the stuff we already read, so this is here to review, uh, the only thing to know about this one, of course, is what I mentioned previously. This one actually create- uh, correctly states that you want to pay attention to your agility when considering extra turns. With that said and done, we have an opportunity to save our progress, which of course we're going to do. When we load up our file, we'll automatically be taken to uh, day one of Devil Survivor Overclocked, where this Let's Play will continue. I apologize if this video uh, is a bit too long for your liking, but I promise uh, the succeeding videos will be shorter and we'll cover uh, more interesting topics in a more condensed manner, ideally anyway. But as always, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then though, goodbye.